Welcome to Lecture 18 of Biology 116 entitled Action Potentials. As we continue our look through the different systems of the human body, we're going to now be focusing on the nervous system in the next two lectures. And in order to understand one of the most important systems that you'll see in all of your studies of biology, we have to first look at a basic introduction to what this system encompasses and what it's really about. So we're going to begin by entitling this first introductory flowchart as Nervous System Intro. And here we're just going to lay the groundwork for what the nervous system really consists of and what its purpose is. These points will be elaborated somewhat in this lecture and also elaborated in the next lecture when we continue a more advanced look at nervous system function. So, speaking of function, we'll begin by looking at a broad overview of what the nervous system does. And it does a lot. But we can sort of classify the nervous system function into two main ideas. And those ideas are surrounding stimulus. The nervous system is going to be important in the detection of stimuli, so understanding that a stimulus is there and understanding that it's present, and also responding to stimuli, so the response to stimuli. So the nervous system functions by responding to stimuli. Both of these things are very important overall of physiology of the human body. Now, detecting stimuli can be sort of elaborated a little bit further, especially this word stimuli, which is just the plural of stimulus. What we mean by this detection is the following. This is going to occur when there's any sort of change. That's the key word here. Any sort of change that occurs So there's going to be a norm, and then let's imagine something different happens, and that occurrence, that difference, can be either inside or outside the body. Inside or outside the body. Now what we mean by this is the following. Something may, you may feel something, or your body internally may sense something. These are all detections of stimuli from the external environment. These are things, therefore, that can be detected. Environmental cues that can be detected and will be responded to. That's the other half of the nervous system. And the response to stimuli is simply going to be the action that happens. When the human body will carry out an action. And that's the key word here. When the action happens, that's the response to stimuli. When a change is detected, whether it's internal or external, that is the detection of stimuli. That's the broad overview of the functions, and we're going to look at this in great detail on a much more a micro level and even macro level later on. Now, in terms of gross anatomy and understanding the basic workings of the nervous system, we're going to just first uh, highlight some key components of this system. Basically, there are going to be two arms of this system, two sort of two sort of parts that are going to work together and cohesively, but will be separated somewhat, as we'll see. Broadly speaking, the nervous system is often divided into the central nervous system. And also, with that, the peripheral nervous system. So these are the two arms of the nervous system. They contain different parts, different subparts, I should say, and thus they're sort of separated. But again, they work together. And that's a big thing of systems physiology and systems biology as a whole, to understand that those systems may be presented separately and parts of them may be presented separately for the understanding of their function, Certainly, they work to get together and cohesively. They communicate with each other. The central nervous system, from an anatomy perspective, contains two main things, the brain and also the spinal cord. Both of these are structures within the central nervous system. We're going to talk more about these two structures in the next lecture, and the peripheral nervous system, which we'll also talk a lot more about in the next lecture, um, can be simply referred to as the system that contains sensory receptors. So they're going to be receptors that sense things. In, uh, so in summary, you can basically call the peripheral nervous system the section of the nervous system that contains various nerves. Nerves are going to be things, for right now, we'll just say that communicate. And specifically, what are they going to communicate? They communicate signals 
and those signals will be specifically between the central nervous system, so that's our main nervous system with the brain and spinal cord that's in charge of everything, and also the rest of the body in a very cyclical manner, in the sense that the rest of the body will send, let's say, a cue to the central nervous system, and the central nervous system will send a different sort of response to that cue, to that peripheral message. So the peripheral message is sent to the central area, and the central area will send a message back to the peripheral area based off of the response necessary. Take a look that's going to happen as a result of a detection and then an eventual response. That's our first look at the nervous system. We're going to now be getting into a little bit more detail associated with this system, specifically looking at it at a functional level by understanding the neuron.